Hello, everybody. This was a Bible study given to me by a sister in the faith from Canada. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the last things I do for a while. I'm preparing, I'm working on some things, and uh, I'm going to be busy. So turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 28. And we'll start, we're going to read the whole thing, and then we're going to do the commentary there. Genesis 28, verse 1, and Isaac called Jacob. Now remember something, Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, Take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. A lot of people don't know it, but the Canaanites were human, fallen angel, satanic hybrids. If you don't understand that, go to my playlist and look up the playlist, The Angels That Sinned, Genesis 6. You know, God is not pleased with the Canaanites. Matter of fact, he says he's going to destroy them. And Abraham, Isaac, both said, don't let my children take a, a wife of the daughters of, the Can of Canaan. Verse 2. So Isaac's telling Jacob, arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. You know, it's interesting is the, uh, this is for the, the, the people who think, you know, the, the Hebrews are black. The word Laban means white. White. And take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. You know, God promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. One little country in the Middle East that called themselves Israel is not many. You know, it's just people are stupid and they're ignorant of the, what the Bible says because they refuse to read it. You know, they're more worried about what's going on for the Super Bowl or the World Series or, uh, you know, who's cheating on who on their favorite soap opera. I mean, really. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee. That thou mayest be a multitude of people, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed. And, and sorry, uh, Jacob's not an apple tree, so when he's talking about seed, he's talking about children. Matter of fact, when you look up seed in the New Testament Greek, it comes from the word, the Greek word sperma, where we get the word for sperm. Okay, and uh, you take a man's seed and give it to a woman's egg, and guess what? You have a child that the uh, New York legislature thinks that you should be able to kill the, while it's being born. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram, unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. So the family were, was from Syria. You ever wonder why the Antichrist in the Middle East want to destroy Syria? Maybe this is why. 
because they're they're fake. Well, if you don't know it, read Revelation 2 9, chapter 2 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 about the uh, synagogue of Satan. They want to destroy Syria, and this is where Abraham's family came from. Verse 6. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. And, and Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had had, Ma, uh, Mala, Af, I don't know, M A H A L A T H, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, and sister to Nebajoth to be his wife. So Ishmael, uh, Esau married two Hittite women who were of the daughters of Canaan. But then he says, oh, I'm going to get me another one. And he, so he goes to Ishmael. And if you don't know this stuff, uh, I've got a playlist on Abraham and his children. Probably 15, 20 hours worth of studies. Be far more fruitful. I mean, it's 90% Bible, people. You know, I don't make this stuff up. Verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Stones for pillows. That doesn't sound too comfortable, does it? All right, here's the punchline. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. So he, he dreamt that there was a ladder from the earth to the heaven, and there's angels going up and down on it, and that's what this study's all about. So... Now, you got to realize something. God made his covenant with, a, with Adam. He reconfirmed it with uh, Eber, and then Shem, with Noah, and then Shem, and then uh, reconfirmed it with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. People will argue and fight, and they'll say, no, God made his covenant with the whole world. You know, it says in John 3.16, for God so loved, loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, as somebody who uh, spoke to me the other night gave me an insight, and she knows who she is, it said, For God so loved the wor world, past tense, yeah, God loved the world that he created as recorded in Genesis 1 and chapter 2. And God saw everything that he had created and it was good. But in Genesis 3, everything became corrupted. God doesn't love the world of Genesis 3, 4, 5, and 6. In Genesis 6, God said, he was grieved that he had even created mankind. I'm paraphrasing. God loved, loved, past tense, the world that he created originally that was without sin. And my opinion is Satan and his fallen angels fell somewhere between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. Because in Genesis 2, it says God uh I'm paraphrasing, that he stopped from what he was doing from his creation and looked upon it and said it and, and saw that it was good or very good. 
All right, let's, uh, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, I believe everything was made on the sixth day. And I think God uh, stopped. That was it. That was the end of the creating. So, all right, so back to Genesis 28. And he, Jacob, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Well, let's stop and take a look at this for a few minutes, people. God said that the seed of of his chosen people would go to the west, the east, the north, and the south. Well, what's west? Uh, America. What's to the east? Well, uh, you know, you're talking uh, India and uh, China. What's to the north? Europe. And to the south? How about South Africa? What, what group of people have blessed the earth? What group of people created trains, airplanes, cars, electricity, refrigerators, air conditioning, heating, multi-story skyscrapers and buildings who created all these things who created television and radio which unfortunately is full of filth but it could be used for good who invented the printing press who printed the bibles who printed who built the churches the blacks in africa no the asians the chinese the japanese India? No. The people in South America? No. Who? Whites did. Whites created all these things. The whole earth was blessed. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Think about that, people. Verse 15, and behold, I am with thee. God says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid. You know, people, some people have no... Jacob was afraid. And some people have no, absolutely no fear of the Lord at all. Uh, I, and I was one of them. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Now think about it, people, the ladder. We're going to go into the ladder. L-A-D-D-E-R. Verse 18, And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar 
and poured oil upon the top of it. Now, pouring oil was like an anointing. The anointed kings uh, poured oil on their head, and the, the Holy Spirit of God was likened unto oil, too. But that doesn't come until after Christ. Well, not entirely. There were people that had the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, but those were special exceptions that God picked specifically. Whereas in the New Testament, uh, it's believers that are born again of the Spirit. All right. Uh, so, and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Beth El. Do you know what Beth means? House. And El has reference to God. So basically, he called the name of that place Beth El which means the house of God. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, what's raiment? Clothing. And will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house of peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. And if you want to read something interesting, um, the coronation stone that they use in England, there's a legend that it's Jacob's pillar from right here. I don't know if it's true. It's legend. What can I tell you? While you're at it, read the uh, Scottish Declaration of Independence uh, of Arboroth. I think it's A-R-O-B-E-R-O-T-H, something like that. You can look it up, Scottish Declaration of Independence. The Scots said that they crossed the Red Sea with Moses. You know, people, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And... You know, the thing is, Israel alone was given the law by Moses uh, from the mount. He didn't give the law to the whole world. And only Israel needed to be redeemed, a de redeemer. All right, so, all right, well, so let's start reading uh, Jacob's Ladder, Jacob's Trouble. Oh, before we get into that, well, let's take a break here and read Jeremiah chapter 30. Um, Jeremiah is one of those books in the Bible. I mean, you know, he pronounces judgment and doom, but also hope and redemption for the elect the chosen, for those that are, are obedient. And a lot of people will tell you that if you're obedient, that you're earning your salvation. Oh, there's so much deception in the church world today. You know, Christ is a king. And every king has a kingdom. And every kingdom has laws. And the king expects his people to follow his laws. And if you're obedient, these morons, these liars, these deceivers will tell you, oh, well, you know, that's lordship salvation that they'll say in derision as they hiss because they're of their father, the devil, the serpent. God expects his people to be obedient. And you're not going to get salvation because you follow the Lord's laws. There is no salvation in God's laws. I mean, it's a gift of God, period. I mean, let's face it. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
In Ephesians 2.8, it says, For by grace. What is grace? It's an unearned favor. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And when you read Genesis 6, there was grace in the Old Testament. It said, And Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And I'm paraphrasing there. There was grace in the Old Testament. Believe me, there was. All right, let's read Jeremiah chapter 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. My people Israel and Judah. God makes a distinction between Israel and Judah. Saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now and, to, and see whether a man doth travail with, a ch with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Huh. Do do black Hebrews, uh, do they have pale faces? Do their faces turn pale? No. And they'll tell you that this is their book. Verse 60, uh, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble but he shall be saved out of it. Read this in Mark 13, Matthew 24. Um, Jacob's trouble is the time of the tribulation, people. But, you know, they'll. this is why the uh, majority of the church preachers will tell you, well, the church is different than Israel and we're going to fly away in pre-trib rapture. And then them Jews, they're going to be, be destroyed if they don't accept Jesus. Really, they don't even, they don't even, they have no idea what the Bible is all about because the Lord blinds their minds. People, those in Christ are the children of Israel. You don't believe me? Take a look in the book of Galatians, chapter 3. Let's take a look. Let's start uh, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. doesn't say that we're the spiritual seed. It says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In John 14, 15, Jesus said, if ye love me, if ye love me, Keep my commandments. Does that sound like lordship salvation? No. All right. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so 
that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off his neck. What's a yoke? You would put a yoke on, uh, it's like a harness on an ox, on oxen, and you would plow the field. It's basically slavery, people. And I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Didn't Christ call himself the son of David? Yes. Verse 10, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none, none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to get spanked big time. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. I'm an expert on getting spanked expert but it was still less than what i deserved verse 12 for for thus if the lord thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous there is none to plead all right verse 13 there is none to plead thy cause you know when you get arrested for a crime and you go to court that's what you want. You want a lawyer that actually cares about you to plead your cause. That's what you want. But here there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. All right, there's the bad part. I'm going to spank you and spank you and spank you. But, verse 17, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause them to draw near. And he shall approach unto me, for who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? 
And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. whirlwind. You know what a whirlwind is, people? A cyclone, a tornado, a hurricane. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Remember what Katrina did to uh, New Orleans? Guess what? It fell on the day that they were going to have a gay pride parade in New Orleans. The very day that Katrina hit was supposed to be the day of a gay pride parade there. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days... Ye shall consider it. What's the latter days? The last days. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it. And until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days, ye shall consider it. 